So there was a lot to like about those old Google Home smart speakers, which were of course recently rebranded to Nest. You got full Google Assistant support packed in there, so they are very clever wee buggers. But when it came to actually playing music, let's face it, they were rather pap. That is until now, because da 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 da, Grand revealed the Google Nest Audio smart speaker aims to rectify these problems with some proper beefy sound. So I'm going to run through the setup of the Google Nest Audio. I'm going to take you on a full-on tour of the features, and I'm going to give you my final verdict on the actual sound quality and everything else as well to see if this is the next smart speaker for your home. And for more on the latest greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So the fresh new Nest Audio is released on October the 15th and will cost you £90 at the time I shot this video. You can actually pre-order it from Google right now and it'll be available via the usual high street stores here in the UK as well. And the contents of the box are about as exciting as you would expect. You get of course the Nest Audio speaker itself, you get the plug to plug it in and you get the quick start guide. Now setting up the Google Nest Audio, what you'll need to do, pay attention, is bung this bit into this rear orifice and then shove the other bit in the wall. And then your Google Nest Audio will spring to life. You'll see the four LEDs start flashing like some kind of crazy UFO. Oh, what a merry little jingle. Now what you want to do to get your Nest Audio smart speaker up and running is download the Google Home app either from the Google Play Store or from the Apple App Store if you use one of them iPhone jobbies. Just have a search, click install and once it's installed hit open. Now because your Nest Audio smart speaker is already active you should hopefully see a setup Nest Audio option pop up at the top of the home app. You just give that a little tap Otherwise, if you don't see it, then what you need to do is hit this little plus icon up in the top corner. You then need to go to set up device and then set up new devices in your home. Now, if you've never actually used Google Home before, you will have to actually set up your homestead. You just give it a name and then basically you can add as many devices as you like to get them all interconnected. And then Google Home will have a bit of a shift to see if it can find that Google Nest Audio smart speaker, which hopefully it will very shortly. Yep, there we go. Uh, yes, I did hear the sound, so hopefully that means we're all good. And as you can see, I've reviewed a fair few smart devices in the past, so I have lots of different rooms set up in my homestead. Uh, but you can just create a new one quickly and easily if this is your first time. I love how cellar is an option. I don't know anyone in the UK who's got a cellar, and let's face it, if you do, you probably use it for nefarious purposes. Hey, Google, what's the best way of disposing of a dead body? Okay, so the Google Nest Audio speaker is now set up and connected to the Wi-Fi network, so that means it can directly access the internet for, you know, your Google Assistant shenanigans and to stream media and such forth as well and then of course you've got the usual T's and Z's and everything to uh, check over and comply with. You'll have to briefly train the Google Assistant to recognize your voice and actually understand you if you've got a strong dialect as well uh, which is quick and easy thankfully and the great thing about the Google Assistant is if you are living in a busy household it can actually recognize who's speaking at it based on the voice and then give you personalized information so for instance if you say what's on my schedule today it can give you your calendar information not your mum's. With the voice shenanigans all sorted it's then time to set up which music service you want to use. You can of course use Spotify or YouTube Music if you don't have a subscription but you will get adverts and all the rest of it and you'll have limited functionality. Uh, I use a good bit of Deezer so let's get that set up. And then anytime I ask the Nest Audio to play me music it'll do it via the Deezer. And you can use the Nest Audio uh, to place calls via your Google Duo account as well otherwise you can actually call the speaker when you're away from home and have a chat with your family. Isn't that nice? So before we dive into the features of the Google Nest Audio smart speaker let's actually check out the design of the thing and it's a very straightforward simple finish as you can see there. Basically looks like a giant fluffy tic tac. This is the chalk colour but you can also grab it in a charcoal finish as well if you prefer a darker hue. Just depends on uh, where it's going to sit in your home and what it needs to sort of blend in with. So the majority of the speaker as you can see there is enveloped in that fabric uh, finish but of course you do have a rubbery foot down below just in case you accidentally give the Nest Audio a knock so it doesn't go flying across the counter. And apparently the majority of the speaker enclosure is actually constructed from 70% recycled plastic as well so good for the environment. It's good to see that there's minimal Google brand and plastered on it as well literally a teeny tiny little logo that you would easily miss slapped away on the very back end of the device. And speaking of that RSN, that's also where you'll find the mic mute switch as well so if you want your privacy you don't want the Google Nest Audio listening into your commands all you do is flick that. The mic's off. And as you can hear, you get voice confirmation of that and also those four LEDs up front turn a sort of sinister orange colour like almost why are you muting me, you bastard. So it's very clear when the Nest Audio is listening. The microphone is back on. And when it's not. 
the mic's off. Now it's kind of hard to believe and the Nest Audio is of course all about voice control but you do actually have some physical controls secreted away in this fluffy form factor. So what you need to do is give it a firm tap up top to pause or play your music like so and you can also raise the volume with the quick tap of this corner and lower it back down with this corner as well. You have to hit it pretty firmly though, give it a proper whack. But naturally, it's a lot easier just to use your voice. You can say, hey Google, play music. Playing some music on Deezer. So stuffed inside of the Google Nest Audio, you've got three far field mics, and these do a great job of picking up your voice, even when the speaker itself is belting out really loud, raucous music on top volume. So for instance, I'm right across the other side of the studio right now. There is the Google Nest Audio uh, sat at the opposite end of the room. It's currently playing some bass heavy music, and I'm gonna attempt to talk over it and make myself heard. Holy Jesus, that's loud. Hey, Google, what's the time right now? It's 3.28 p.m. Hey, b Turn down the volume a bit. So as you can see, even though I was across the other side of the room, I didn't even raise my voice and it quite clearly heard me say, hey, Google over that ridiculously loud music. So very impressive microphones as usual. Now, as far as the actual audio quality goes, it definitely gets a thumbs up as well, especially considering the fairly compact dimensions. What you got packed inside of this thing is a 75 millimeter woofer plus a 19 millimeter tweeter. And while it's not quite as good as proper full on beefy dedicated speakers like the Huawei Sound X, it definitely does a good job of producing natural sound and audio for something in quite a discreet form factor. Now, Google reckons that the Nest Audio is 75 percent louder than the original Google Home speaker and that sounds about right as you witnessed just there the top volume of this thing will certainly easily fill a fairly large room and in a fairly small room it'll blow your bloody head off. And though it is worth pointing out that the sound is monodirectional it comes out the front of the speaker not the back end of the speaker so you don't get full 360 degree audio. And I definitely prefer to have it set to around sort of the 70 to 80 percent of volume level. I found that on the very top volume level uh, even in quite a large space the sound did get a little bit distorted when the tracks got a bit raucous. But this thing has definitely got the grunt where it really counts. Rock and metal music sounded absolutely fantastic and dance music as well really really impressed me. Uh, quite complex tracks from the likes of Daft Punk and Maloko. You could hear all the individual elements quite clearly and the bass has a kick to it but it doesn't piddle all over the rest of the range. And Google's quest for natural sound and audio really shone uh, when it came to spoken word stuff as well. So acoustic tracks, podcasts, spoken word books all sounded absolutely jizz worthy, really nice and natural. That said, in my test in the wee bugger hasn't been absolutely perfect. Once or twice, my music just sort of cut out for absolutely no apparent reason. So I had to restart it using another voice command. And occasionally when I tap it to pause, occasionally when I come back to tap it to uh, resume the music, it just won't actually bother. I'm kind of hoping those are just little bugs uh, which will be ironed out in an update, hopefully ahead of the actual uh, UK release of this thing. And if in some glorious post-COVID world you plan on having lots of parties and house gatherings again, the good news is the Nest Audio will play nicely with other Nest branded speakers. You can sync them all up, get your uh, music filling the entire homestead, or of course you can just have a couple of them in the same room producing a stereo speaker effect. And of course you've got all of the usual Google Assistant shenanigans including full voice control over everything in your smart home. So for instance I could say, okay turn off my studio lights and thy will be done. So that right there is my full on tour and early impressions of the Google Nest Audio speaker. Certainly very, very smart indeed for its compact size. If you're looking for a smart speaker that can actually pump out some good sound and audio, then job done. Can be yours for 90 quid from October the 15th here in the UK, direct from Google or via the likes of Amazon and various high street stores. So let me know, are you tempted? Have you already got your pre-order in? Be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe, do that notifications bell and have yourselves a lovely rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.